Okay, we will discuss now this list mean square or LMS algorithm. So we have described a general structure for an adaptive filter, which was you apply some input u n or x n to an adaptive filter, which has time varying filter coefficients. So in response to this input and based on the filter weights it generates the output yn and then you provide a desired response sequence dn so find the difference between these two you get a estimation error and this estimation error is used to update the filter weights using adaptive algorithm Okay. This is error sequence EN, which is basically DN minus YN. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have studied how these uh, adaptive filters are used for different applications for system identification or inverse modeling, linear prediction, and this noise cancellation. Okay. So all these use the same structure the only difference is that how this desired response is applied basically to the filter okay and for updating these filter weights this adaptive algorithm what we have discussed in the previous class it was steepest descent algorithm which is based on the gradient so the filter weights are updated using equation wn plus 1 is equal to wn plus mu into p minus r w n okay all these are vectors so w n is the vector of this filter coefficients at a particular time n and then wn plus 1 that is the at next iteration when you get the filter weights it is computed using this equation okay so one thing you can see here again is that you need these statistics the p and this r which is the correlation and the autocorrelation correlation matrix in order to update these filter weights okay which is generally again not available okay so what we do in this lms algorithm we basically use the estimates of this p and r matrices and we develop a algorithm which is based on the data itself okay that means it uses only this input signals and this desired response signal samples to update these filter coefficients without any knowledge of the correlation and the cross correlation matrices okay so the simple idea is that in place of using the p and r you use estimates of p and r okay so r which is the autocorrelation matrix it was defined as expectation of u of n into its hermitian transpose okay so in fact it was e of because u of n is a column vector of dimension suppose it is m cross 1 so its hermitian transpose is a 1 cross m row vector so it has elements u of n and then u of n minus 1 u of n minus 2 and so on so for this the elements were u n star u n minus 1 star and so on so when you multiply these two matrices u n into u n star and then if you take e of this so this the product of these two matrices is gives a m cross m correlation matrix m cross n matrix and then if you apply u operator you get e of u n into u n star so it becomes autocorrelation at 0 lag okay and similarly u n into u of n minus 1 it is autocorrelation at lag 1 expectation of this okay so this was somehow like this 
it was R0, R1, R2 and so on. Then it was R minus 1, R0 and R1 and so on. So it is called as a topless matrix. Okay, this is the cross correlation matrix that we use. And similarly, P, P is a cross correlation matrix between U and N and D. So it was E of U and D in star. Now in this case, your U n is again a column vector of n cross 1. So it is U n, U of n minus 1, U of n minus 2, and D n is a 1 cross 1 matrix. It is a single element, D n star. So when you multiply those two, you get again n cross 1 matrix. So it will be U of n into d n star, then u of n minus 1 into d n star and so on. And when you take e or apply e operator over it, so you get e of this which is cross correlation at 0 lag. So it becomes this matrix p 0 cross correlation at lag of minus 1 and so on, which we call as vector p or matrix p. Okay. Now we use simple estimates of P and R to modify this steepest descent algorithm into LMS algorithm. So the simple estimate of R is that in place of using this expectation over this matrix, we simply use the samples of this, so UN into UHN. We omit this U operator. Okay, because the samples are available to you. If you use it, it means you have an ensemble average. Okay, so so many processes are there, and then their correlation has to be found, expectations average has to be found. Okay. But since practically you have only one signal at hand, input is you and desired response is DN. Okay, those samples are available to you. So this matrix is basically computed from those samples only. So you have UN into UHN. So without any expectation. That is estimate of correlation matrix. Similarly, in the P, we use estimate P is cap, which is equal to now U n into D n star. This is the estimate for cross correlation matrix. Okay. Now, based on these two estimates, your algorithm, which was initially your W n plus one, is equal to W n plus mu into p minus r w n. This is steepest descent algorithm. So we have used estimates for r and p. So in place of r we use its estimate which is u of n into its submission transpose. And for p we use u of n into d n start. Now these two matrices they can be directly obtained from the signal itself. Okay, so if you apply these two estimates into this equation, what you get, <coughs> you will get Wn plus 1 is equal to Wn plus mu into <coughs> P is Un into Dn star minus R. Now in place of R, I am using Un into its solution transpose multiplied with Wn. So you can modify it as Wn plus mu. You can take u and u in common from this. So u n into d n star minus u h n into w n. Okay. And if you look for this equation, this this term inside the brackets, it is nothing but n star. Okay. So you have this input x u n to filter with some filter of options w0, w1 and so on. So what is the y n? Y n is basically submission of w i star into u of n minus i. Submission over i. Or in terms of matrices, you can write it as w i h into u of i. U of n. 
so w h into q of n inner product of this okay and then e n is the estimation error which is basically d n minus y n so if you take e n star it will be d n star minus y n star so if you take conjugate of this this is w n here of course so if you take the conjugate of this you will get u h n into w n okay so this term is basically nothing but a n star so you can write it simply as w n plus mu u of n into a n star this is w n plus 1 so this is the fundamental equation for this lms algorithm okay. so now how you update these filter weights so w n is the filter weights at any particular time n so to get the new vector of filter weights at time n plus 1 you have to add a correction to these weights by this amount so which is nothing but let's see in this again u n this u n is a vector of course but e n is not a vector okay it is a one cross one single element mu is the step size again okay that i have chosen in this lms in the steepest uh, descent algorithm okay so this algorithm gives you the this equation gives you an weight updation mechanism for adaptive filter using LMS algorithm. Now what it actually is, so you have WN plus 1 is equal to WN plus mu of UN into N star. And I am saying that, okay, this, because this is a vector, this is also a vector. This is also a vector. These three are the vectors. Wn plus 1, Wn and Un. Or in terms of vector, you can write this equation as Wn, suppose your filter has, if your filter, Un is the input to this filter, with time varying filter options, W0n, W1n, and so on up to W, suppose m minus 1 are the m filter weights are there. Okay? So it will generate a sequence and then you have a desired response and the difference get the error sequence this error sequence is feedback to the LMS which will update on these filter weights okay now how the filter weights are updated <coughs> w1 is the initial you can say filter weights at any time and let us suppose we start from n is equal to zero and we set this factor w0 to a vector of zeros it means all the m filter coefficients they are zeros okay so how you get at next iteration how these vectors or how these vectors are updated or the how the filter coefficients are updated so w0 at now n is equal to 1 w1 at 1 up to w m minus 1 at 1 Plus, it will be mu, you have to choose step size into un. Now, un is basically what? It is u of n, <coughs> u of n minus 1. So, if n I am starting at 0, it will be u0, u of minus 1, and so on, into e of 0. Okay. So, e of 0 is basically multiplied with u0, it is multiplied with u of minus 1, u of minus 2 multiplied with mu and then that is added to the individual filter weights to get the new weights okay or in general you can write this equation like this wn plus 1 is wn plus mu e un into en star okay if it is a real 
let i keep this star as nominee so w n is the vector of filter weights at time n so w0 at any time n w1 at any time n w2 at n and so on so there are m filter weights so plus you are adding to this mu times un now un is the vector of input data previous n sample previous n sample starting from n so you have n you have n minus n n minus 2 and multiplied with n star now n star is a single element it is not a vector and that is how you will get w0 n plus 1 w1 of n plus 1 and so on okay so you can say for any particular coefficients what is the equation for any kth coefficient it is wkn plus mu times u of n minus k into n star So the kth sample of the input data is multiplied with the sample error, multiplied with mu and added to that sample to get its new updated sample. Okay. So here some incoming data. So for any particular time, if you say at n is equal to any value, so you have to see what are the previous time samples for that data. That vector is multiplied with the error at that particular time because en is now see what it is basically dn minus yn so at a particular time what is the sample value for desired response and at that particular time what is the output of this filter these two will be subtracted to get en which is a single value now it's not a vector and this vector will be multiplied with the input data vector of the input data for the previous time samples multiplied with this step size and add it to this filter weights you will get the new weight okay and so on this is how the vectors are updated okay again for the convergence of this algorithm this condition must be satisfied that 0 should be less than this mu should be between 0 and 2 by lambda max where now lambda max is the maximum eigenvalue of this correlation matrix now since in this case we are not having any correlation or cross correlation matrices involved so mu of un into a star and we have stated that mu should be between 0 and 2 by lambda max so stability are the convergence of the algorithm so you have to now find some uh, you can say equation to find this lambda max because lambda max is basically the eigen maximum eigenvalue from this autocorrelation matrix R. But since we are not now using R in this equation, we are updating the filter weights directly from the data itself. Okay, so there must be some estimate for lambda max based on the data that you have. Okay. So you have seen that when you have studied eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you have seen that R, which is a correlation matrix, so all the diagonal elements for this are R zeros, correlation at zero lag. Okay. And we have defined a term that is trace of R, which is the sum of the elements along the diagonals. So if you have M if it is m cross 1 if I mean, you can say m cross 1 matrix or m cross m matrix so you will have m times r0 okay and trace of the matrix can also be obtained as lambda 1 plus lambda 2 up to lambda m minus 1 okay or if you have m plus 1 cases you can have 1 to m so what it means is that that this lambda max is basically the upper bound or lambda max you can say 
is less or equal to sum of all the eigenvalues. Okay, this is limited by this upper bound. And this is nothing but the trace of the matrix. Okay, and the trace of matrix is nothing but equal to m times r0. And r0 is nothing but now what? r0 is the autocorrelation at 0 lag, which is nothing but the mean square value of the signal. Isn't it? So, anyhow, it means this lambda max can be replaced with the trace of the matrix and which can be further replaced with m times r0 and this m times r0 can be replaced with m into expectation of or mean square value of m. And since now since there is again a problem to find this e of x n square, so we use this estimate. So e of so mean square value estimate we use again that is we use simple estimate for sample mean square value okay so we have again omitted this is the average power basically that is obtained from the data itself okay so this can be used to replace this lambda max in this equation okay so lambda max can be obtained directly now from <coughs> of course it cannot be directly obtained but it can be replaced with an estimate like this which is a signal power okay so this is the how lms algorithm is basically used for updating the weights okay so it is widely used the practical algorithm in the adaptive filters so adaptive filters there are so many applications so we have already discussed many there are many more applications like one is you have what we call is that <coughs> uh, noise canceller we have already discussed see if you have a pure uh, sinusoid for the noise cancellation a signal is corrupted by purely pure sinusoid okay and you have to estimate this signal from this vn part or you have to eliminate this sinusoid component what you can do simply is that you can have a notch filter with a null point at the particular angular frequency corresponding to omega naught. Okay. But the problem generally arises when the angular frequency of this noise source if it changes with time. So in that case you cannot have a fixed filter or notch filter which will remove this frequency. So if it goes from this to this, it means you have to design a new notch filter in that case. Okay. So to solve this problem, you can use the adaptive filters. Okay. Now again, your Vn will be Dn, the desired response, and we use some primary sensor here, which is basically a noise. So this this part will be your Vn, which is Sn plus this noise, and that input to this is a noise, which may be a sign of omega n plus phi. It means you now see the angular frequency must be same, but the phase and the amplitude they can be different. So if you apply this to adaptive filter and we use LMS algorithm to create the filter weights. So this adaptive filter will provide an estimate of the noise. The output of this will basically provide an estimate of the noise which is in Vn. So Vn so this noise and this noise will be cancelled out. You will get S and the output. Okay. Now this filter has two properties because it is now a self-tuning filter. Okay. Even if the frequency of the signal in this input noise changes, that will also change here. Okay. So accordingly, this filter will change its frequency response. Okay. So it is a self-tuning noise filter basically. And another thing is that you can make this 
frequency response or sharp cutoff by choosing a small step size. Yeah. Okay. This is how adaptive filters are used for cancellation of sinus or interferences. Okay. Generally, we use in the biomedical signals. Suppose we have ECG which is corrupted with 50 hertz noise. Okay. And the frequency, of course, does not remain always constant. It means you cannot use a 50 hertz noise filter. Okay. If there is a slight shift in the frequency, that will not be eliminated by the notch filter. So you have to go for adaptive filters. Okay. <laughs> Similarly, we use another, we have another one more application. Similar to this, which is called adaptive line enhancer (ALE). In the adaptive line enhancer, the problem is that okay, you have a sinusoid, a pure sinusoid, which is buried in a broadband noise. So you have a single frequency, A naught, suppose sine omega naught, n plus phi, and it is corrupted with wide noise. The problem is to estimate this or to detect this signal, which is buried in this broadband noise. Okay, so again you can have, what you can do is a simple bandwidth filter here, which is centered around omega naught. Okay, so to detect this frequency from this noise. But if the frequency changes, if it goes from here to here, you have to again design a new bandwidth filter. Okay, it means every time the frequency is changing, you have to design a new bandwidth filter. Are you to change this pass band from mega naught to suppose mega naught cap? Okay. So in order to avoid this problem again, we have an apple line answer, which is very similar to this mask answer. In that, what we do, in place of providing the reference signal to this adaptive filter, it is generated from this, this is dn, yn. So the input to the adaptive filter is basically the same input, or delayed input, in fact. So we provide some delay here of n samples z to the power minus n so this is now this signal signal plus broadband noise okay and the same input is delayed and it is provided to the adaptive filter then it computes the output you find the difference again the error again feedback it to the lms algorithm it will update the filter weights so in this process the noise in this and the noise in this this output basically now generates estimate of the noise. Okay, so what we have in, at the output is, is again a scaled basically sinusoid in this noise. Okay, this is what is the depth line answer basically. Now in this case, you are not giving a separate input to the adaptive filter. The input to the adaptive filter is generated from this signal itself using the delay. Okay. So it again adapts its frequency response according to the frequency of the signal. Okay. So it, its frequency response will be basically band pass filter centered around omega naught. So if the frequency to change, it will change its frequencies from this to this frequency and so on. Okay. So similarly, you can use it for many other applications that we have discussed some like your channel equalizations, adaptive noise cancellations, okay. Adaptive beam forming is also there. Then there is instantaneous frequency measurements. So in many books on this uh, adaptive filters, you can get so many examples. So for noise cancellation, I will just take one example here. This is how adaptive filters. This is a example from this book on statistical signal processing by M. Hayes. So you have a pure sinusoid. It is corrupted with some random noise, and this is the noise. Okay, it means this part is basically your DN, 
and this is the input to the filter u and rx n. okay and this is using lms algorithm how you get the error signal okay so this is a very good approximate of this so if you change the frequency here of course the you will again get this same output with a different frequency now see in this you figure you will see also in the starting again okay, the the signal is not as close approximate of this but after some time it is a very much close approximate of the signal the reason for this is that <coughs> Because during the initial phase, when the filter adapts, you have high mean square error. Okay, and after some times, when this adaptive filter learns the signal characteristics, then it will become almost stable. Okay, so it's a learning phase. So during the learning phase, it will it will not track exactly the input signal, basically what you are going to achieve. Okay, but after some time, when it, when it learns this environment, it will track this input. Okay. Similarly, one more example. I will. I'm sorry. This is one more case in which how the filter weights are updated for a linear prediction. Okay. So this linear prediction structure we have discussed. So for we apply this input to this directly to this as desired response and the input is delayed and the estimate of this is applied to compute this estimation error and then this adaptive field updates these weights okay and in this you have seen the coefficients okay how the coefficient actually this is basically a two filter uh, two coefficient filters so it means you have one or two coefficients w0 and w1 which you are using for the linear prediction and since we have used only one delay z to the minus one here it means you are estimating the data at n based on the data up to n minus one okay this is what is this estimating and these are the actual filter weights which are shown dotted here Okay, this is actually solution to minor filter, which will give you the minimum mean square error. And then you can see that how the adaptive filter basically change its weights as this due to uh, this weights are updated. How this LMS algorithm will change? So we have started from zero. We have set both the filter weights to zero. We don't know where the solution will lie. So we have randomly selected it to zero. So at each iteration, then these filter weights go on changing. Okay. So after maybe 400 and 450 or 500 iterations, your solution will be very close to the exact solution. So they will track. Okay. So this is for maybe one step size. This is for another step size. So in this case, you can see there's even after 500 iterations, the filter weights they are not stabilized. They are fluctuating around these actual values. Okay, so this is called as mis misadjustment. So, okay, this is how these filters they are used for different application adaptive filters. So we start with these stochastic processes and this random processes and this filter curing binary filter here. So we will discuss a new portion which is very important in signal processing and communication, which is the wavelength theory, okay, beyond this.